Hi, I'd like to continue talking about mocking your projects up in Xcode. Um, let me point out a couple things in this video before we move on to really building the project. Um, I'm going to do an example here uh, where I make sort of a, a little dialog box or something that pops up in front of the current view, okay? So let's imagine that... Um, that uh, we need a little dialog box, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new view controller, okay? So I'll just grab a new one, and this is where my dialog box is going to live, okay? So it's going to be in here, right? And we can size this to whatever size you want to use. I'll maybe make it iPhone 6 size there, right? And uh, so I want to draw the dialog box here, okay? And I just want it to be a small box in the middle of the page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down the object palette here to the almost to the bottom and find the view. Okay, so remember we used the view earlier, the UI view, to create a colored box, right? So we used it to create this colored area here, right? And we can use it for, for this also. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the view and drag it here, and maybe I'll position it approximately in the center here and maybe make it a little bit taller, like that. Okay. And then we can give it a background color. So the UI view is the base class for all these other objects in the, um, the palette here. So, you know, whenever they have the view area at the bottom, right, This they all share these same properties. So just like the button and the label and the image all have a view property and you can set the background color well that's where it comes from right so we can do the same thing here we can set the background color so i'm going to go in here and i'll make the background color black okay and then what i want to do is i want to add a label here okay so i'll drag a label out here and a button okay and you can put anything you want in the label. I'll, I'll say um, modal view, okay? And then I'll set the color of the text on the modal view to white, okay? And I'm going to set it to white because I'm going to move it on top of the, the box here so we'll be able to read it, right? Now, when I do this, you can see that in the outline view here, the modal view, the black box, right this little black box here is is a view and then it's like i can see that it's actually contained in this view right and we can tell that one is contained in the other because they're nested and then now the 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 label is nested inside this other view okay so it's a child like the label is a child of this view and this view is a child of the view up here and this view is the entire view for the screen Okay, it's important to understand the structure here because now that this is nested, if we move the black box, you can see the label moves with it, right? Okay, let's make sure we snap that to the center of the screen, right? Let's get the button now, and maybe we'll use this button to close this modal view. So I'm going to drag it inside the box, so now it's a child of the black box there. And then maybe we'll name it close or done or something, right? Okay. And you can align this, make sure it's aligned on the center there, right? And you could put some other text in here or a picture or something, right? Um, now, this would look really good maybe if it had rounded corners. Well, you know what I did is I, I made a, you know, we already had this custom button class, but, you know, I made a custom view class so you could add the rounded corner and the border on a view. So to get this custom view class, just create a new Swift file, you know, command N. Choose new Swift file, name it. You know, I'll, I'll just recreate it for you here. Maybe I'll do that, right? Let me delete this. Move it to the trash there, right? You know, I'll just make a brand new file. Um, choose iOS source Swift file. Click next. Name it custom view. You can really name it anything you want. Um, I'm going to name it custom view, right? And then uh, click create and then it'll save it to your project here. I'm going to move it into the folder here with these other files. And now what we're going to do, and I'll put a link to this in the video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my Gist Hub account here, 
and I have a file in here called customview.swift. Okay, so there's a gist in here. And you want to just copy the code inside the gist. So just get everything inside here from line 1 to 38. Just copy it and then go back to Swift and paste it here. You can actually paste it over this because I think it has that at the top. Or actually it has UI kit, right, which is probably what we want. So you can just paste it there, save it, and you're done. Okay? Well, at least you're done with this part, right? So let's go back to Storyboard. And what I want to do is the same procedure that we did with the button and the image view and the text fields, right? I'm going to select the, um, the view here, right? Just the second view, not this one, right? Because that's the background, right? We want to just get the one, the black box that's in front. And uh, I'll go to the little newspaper here, the Identity Inspector. And in the class field, we'll type in custom. And I started typing custom, and it says custom button, which is not what I want. So I'm going to make sure that it says custom view, because that's the one that I want in this case. Okay, So I'll choose custom view. And then just hit return to make sure that it accepts that. And then switch to the property inspector, and then you'll see custom view properties here. And we've got the border color, border width, and border radius. So maybe I'll just, you know, I'll leave the border off and, you know, um, you know, because I don't, maybe I don't want a border at all. I just want some rounded corners. So, you know, there we go. I'm thinking that maybe I'll go back and I'll add a shadow to these. I think you can do that without too much work. So stay tuned. If I, if I, I'll fig, uh, if I figure that out, I'll, I'll make a video about it, right? So anyway, so here we are. And uh, I've got the radius here. I set it to 20. The, the number doesn't really matter, right? And now what I'd like to do is I would like to um, open this up as a modal view. Okay, so now here's the thing. If we work with the navigation controller, this is going to keep track of history. And the modal view is sort of like a side track. It's not part of the history. It's really just asking a question in the moment. And then we're going to put the modal view away um, when we're done with it, right? Uh, and then be right back where we, where we left off. So just for the experiment here, Let's say you click on the sign up button and I want to bring the modal view up in front of the sign up button, okay? Right, even though this isn't, it doesn't say sign up, right? But uh, we're going we're gonna to arrange that in the next video maybe, okay? So for right now, I just want to bring this view up here as a modal when you tap the sign up button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to control drag from the sign up button over to this view controller. Right, and then I get this action segue menu. Right, oops, I clicked outside. Let me do that again. Right, and what I want to do is I want to choose um, present modally. Okay, so I'll choose that one, and then I get this modal segue. Now, the modal segue looks like a little box, it's different from the relationship segue, and the push segue or show segue. See, this one has a little arrow pushing right to left, okay? So um, let's move this over here, right? And let's give it a test. So uh, I'll click the play button here. And there it goes. It opens up. I'll click the sign up button, and there's my modal view, right? So there's a couple things about this. First, the modal view is covering the entire view. It'd be, it would be cool if I could kind of see this stuff in the background behind the view, so as if this came up as in, in front of it, right? And second, I don't have any way to close it. My close button isn't working, okay? So let's do the close button first, okay? So I, I think, if I understand correctly, you're supposed to be able to control drag from the close button to this exit item right here. But for some reason, actually I'm going to make sure that that doesn't do anything, but um, for some reason this exit item doesn't work in Swift, okay? If I understand correctly, that's what's supposed to happen there, but it doesn't work. So what we need is we need a little, um, a little helper class, and I've actually made that already here. It says uh, dismiss segue. So you just need a little class with this, with this code in it. And I already have that. Uh, you know what I'll do is I'll delete it and I'll remake it. Um, so I'll 
delete that. So imagine like you don't have that. And I'll put a link to this also in the video. So make a new file, just Command N, or go to File, you know, New File, right? And what you want to do is you want to choose iOS Source Swift File, and we'll call it Dis uh, Miss Segue, okay? So Dismiss Segue is what we're going to name that, okay? And then click Create, and then on my gist hub here, I have a little snip that snippet of code right here under dismiss segue. So I'll put a link to that in the video. So what you want to do is just copy the code here. It's just a scant 10 lines. Copy that. Uh, paste it here. Okay, save it. And you're done. I'll drag it in here. And then we'll go back to storyboard. And now, um, Essentially, like you can drag this, um, like this button, you can really connect it to anything now. So I think if I drag up here, oh, I guess it doesn't work on that one. Um, you can pretty much just drag it anywhere. Like if I drag it up to this other, um, let me do that again. Hold on. I'm going to control drag from the button here. I'm having trouble selecting it there. You know, if you have trouble selecting the button here, you can actually just do the same thing from the outline. So if I drag from the outline over here, or actually I could drag up to, you know, one of the view controllers here if I, if I had them open, but I'll drag like this up to this view controller, and I'll choose dismiss. So this won't show up normally. It's showing up because we added the dismiss segue. So I'm going to choose dismiss, and then it's going to give me this extra segue here with this little symbol on it, okay? So you can just arrange that however it works best for you. It's kind of hard to read them when they cross over like that. But anyway, let's give it a try. So I'll click the Run button. And builds my project. And then I'll click Sign Up. And then there's the modal view. And when I click Close, it goes away. Okay, so that's working pretty good. Let's do one more thing, right? So like I said, I, I, I like this, but I want the modal view to appear kind of transparent in front of what I have here, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this view, and what I want to do is I want to select the background view, which is this one. Okay, so it's at the top level here, and you, could, you can usually just get it just by clicking on the background, right? And if you can't, then you can select it in the outline view. Okay, and this is just a view just like the black box, right? So you, it's got a background color, and you could set that background color to transparent if you like, okay? And then now, and maybe this black box too, you know, I like this black color, but um, maybe I'll set the opacity to be, you know, like 60, 70%, right? Um, let's test it again. So I'll, I'll run my project again. And any moment now, oh, there it is, right? So uh, I'll click on sign up, and this box shows up. Now, you saw for a moment there that it was the way we wanted it, and then all of a sudden the screen goes black and the background view disappears. So what's happening is as soon as this covers the background view, then... Um, Xcode decides that the background view isn't needed and it kind of gets rid of it, right? You know, so this is kind of working, except not quite right. So what we'll do is this. The segue that brings up this view is, is this one right here, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this segue, and then you can see it says Storyboard Segue, okay? And there's some options here for this segue. You can give it a name. You can give it a custom class. You can say, uh, you know, what kind it is. And we're doing present modally, right? And then there's a presentation and a transition option, right? And if we go to, like, actually, if you go to transition, you can set, like, how the transition, you know, works. I kind of like the default one, so I'm going to leave that alone. And then, but, the, but let's take a look at presentation, right? So under presentation, you can say full screen, uh, current context, uh, page sheet, uh, form sheet. And then at the bottom here, there's these two options. It says over full screen and over current context. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose this one. I think it's the one I want right here is over current context. So in other words, I want to keep the, the, the current context or the current view because remember a modal view just appears in front of or on top of a view, right? So let's keep the current context and then um, just show this in front, right? So I'll run the project again. And there it loads up and then I'll click sign up and now my modal view appears in front, right? And then I can close it, right? I can go back to the view. So that works pretty good, right? We have very little code there. I just copied that little snippet there and I used a little bit to get the rounded corners, but uh, now we're done and you can just, you can create as many of these as you want without writing more code, right? Um, so anyway, so that works pretty good. I hope that helps you out. Notice that um, I set the background color of the view to transparent. If you wanted it to look grayed out in the background, you could switch this to white and set the color to, you know, some percentage transparent, right? So maybe I'll make it 50% transparent and uh, then it would look like this. So we'll click sign up and then now you can see it kind of grays out the stuff in the background. So maybe that would be a useful technique also, right? So anyway, so thanks for watching and I hope that that is helpful.